What's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjui here with uh, the quickest and dirtiest possible video I can make about the Lion King event and the unlock of Scar. We're going to break this down into roughly three parts. The first part is going to be the event in general and what you need to do and how you can proceed through it. Uh, the second part is going to be the characters you unlock, how good and bad they are, and the third, of course, will be the team and what you might be able to do with them. So starting off right at the beginning, obviously, we're going to go into Scar's Lair. Now, Scar's Lair event has changed slightly for those who may have played in the beta. The Scar's Lair event now no longer requires keys to access, thankfully, uh, and it is a some limited time event, very similar to the Onward event if you had played that a couple weeks ago. This is what I imagine a good majority of the events are going to feel like going forward uh, as they were kind of testing around a whole bunch of ideas and I think they liked the engagement from that style event. So starting off a little bit different than the a Lion King event, uh, the opening event just requires hero characters. That's it. So. Anyone with the hero tag in your roster, which you can sort easily to find out, is allowed to be used here. As you proceed up, you will notice there's a star level requirement. The star level requirement goes up, at level of obviously one, until eventually capped right here at the end for five. What you don't see on this screen, but to let you know, is every time you complete an event, there is a guaranteed number of Rafiki tokens you receive. Um, and that's great because the possible rewards, even though they do say chance one to two, one to three, one to four, one to five, in your head you'd say, oh, well that means on average I'd get three, two, one and a half to two. Obviously you can't have a half, one. Uh, no, you're gonna get one every time you do this. It doesn't matter. You might get really lucky and get two or something, but the uh, drop rates on these events aren't truly phenomenal. Eh, maybe they're working on the numbers, maybe the numbers aren't working right, that's what I'm gonna assume. Uh, so, every stage you can go up is really important because of the guaranteed Rafiki shards you can get. Rafiki, we'll get into him a little bit, but he's kind of a healer with a little bit of control, his ability to stun players, uh, very relevant and required in order to proceed into the next event. The next event, the Boneyard, will help you unlock Simba. As you can see, it's the same thing. Uh, ignore the recommended. This is just advice to make sure you can accomplish the task. But what's required is having Rafiki and hero characters. So all of the hero characters you use to unlock Rafiki and farm him are usable in this stage. The only exception is you also have to add Rafiki. So on the first pass, if you get a one or two star Rafiki, you can relatively easily complete the first two. The same thing applies in the second you complete the mission for the first time, you get a guaranteed number of tokens for Simba. Um, so the first couple will probably give you enough to get close to unlocking him over the course of the event. If you can only go as far as this, you'll probably have farmed it enough that you've unlocked at least Rafiki and Simba, which is great, because, not because they're amazing characters, but because you don't have to worry too much uh, going into the next event about starting from scratch. These events are meant to build into each other and people who are willing to spend any money or gems, as you can see right here, will get a little bit more progress along the line depending on how much they spend on it. But these are designed as ladder events where every time they come back, you do a little bit better. So going into this, as you get Rafiki stronger, you can work on not only more Simba shards overall, but more of these special items. Now, the gold increase obviously is great. You know, you'll be able to farm this and get a little bit extra gold, a little bit extra potions, and Lion King coins. Lion King coins seem to be a new thing they're trying out where every event or most events are based on these specialty chests that only show up during the event where you get a number of shards for each of the character over the course of the event. I enjoy this. Uh, I kind of, of course, I think we can all agree that maybe we wish those had a little bit more character shards than they give us, but ultimately, since the characters are so affordable and since the first four or five stars in a character isn't a crazy amount of character shards, 
I think it's still an acceptable amount, and we really can't do anything about it right now other than voice our opinions on what we think and see if they listen. So moving into this event, it's just going to be an issue of how much you can get into Rafiki to go in. Uh, you should probably be able to at very least unlock Rafiki and Simba if you've been working on uh, correct heroes and correct villains. Now, if you followed along with me before, you knew that the opening heroes that you received uh, plus Aladdin are adequate to complete, but you were really working towards more of a kingdom style team featuring characters like uh, Aladdin, Jasmine, and Shan Yu as your overall team, your split team, or your hero slash villains teams, you're probably going to want to lean into the Ariel you received early, as well as Buzz Lightyear for future events. Ariel is a phenomenal overall character, kind of a jack-of-all-trades character, and her passive really brings up the value of any team. Her leadership ability, I apologize. I, I think... If you were working on the characters you had in order to progress in the Heroes campaign so that you can progress in the villains as the Hopscotch game gets played, I think you shouldn't have an issue going through the early stages of the Rafiki or the Boneyard once you've eventually unlocked Rafiki. Once you get past, once you get to Boneyard 3, that's when these recommendations are a little bit more serious. But even then, you should have absolutely no problem completing the first two on the first pass of the event. Unless, of course, you started during the event or the day before. Uh, two stars is not an unreasonable amount of stars. Even some of you might have been able to get to three, depending on where you were at already. But that's kind of why it's important to work on stars on very specific characters and not kind of cherry pick random characters and split out. Always build tall, don't build wide. After this, after you finish the Boneyard, we go to the final showdown. Now, the final showdown is how you unlock Scar. In order to do it, if you've been following along, you need both Rafiki and Simba. So again, you'll see nothing crazy here. Just have them unlocked. Two-star event, three-star, all the way up to five-star. Once they're at five-star, you don't have to worry too much about the event anymore. You'll be okay. Now, the thing about this is it's very unlikely for the average player to unlock Scar on the first pass. You have to get either really lucky with these Lion King coins or maybe spend a little money to, to progress to a meaningful point so you get enough shots. You might even have to do a couple of core refreshes every once in a while to progress a little bit more towards Scar. The bad news is well, that means you're probably not going to get Scar on this pass. The good news is you're not really missing out on much. Now, I personally love Scar. I think he's a very fun character, but fun characters aren't always the best characters. And as all of these events are built around characters that you're supposed to get over time, they aren't necessarily overpowered. There are some exceptions. There are some characters that are event oriented that are incredibly good and very meaningful. Scar is more of what I like to call a vanity project. He is a character that uh, if you do decide to work on them, it's not because they're, he's great. It's because you like what the team does or you like that character or you've already worked on all of the things you did need to work on. So now you're working on other stuff. And there's always value for that because I'm going to say this again. This game is not a PvP arena. This game is so much more than that, as you will see in the coming months. So... Overall, just taking a quick look at the Lion King coins and what this orb does before we go any further. Uh, as you complete missions, you'll be able to accrue enough Lion King coins to unlock the Lion King chest. The Lion King chest itself guaranteed to drop some amount of gold and potions and at least one character shard of the three characters you are working towards. I like this in that if you open a handful of the right tokens, you might just be able to unlock Scar without worrying about it. So a little bit of RNG involved. Again, doesn't matter if you unlock Scar because he's not going to be that necessary. It's more of something that you can put your feather in your hat and say, look what I got. But you could be lucky and get him without spending any money or spending too much time without panicking about what you can do. That said, it becomes more and more stable and unlock the better you can progress in that event. You also have a chance of getting 
arbitrary items. Most of these items will be used to upgrade at least one of these characters. So overall, these chests are very nice. I always like it when what you are receiving out of a chest also benefits your roster. Even if these are for the characters you're using, you can feel free to use them on other characters, obviously. You're not locked into using any one or two pieces. Uh, or specifically to a character and I enjoy that same thing with the offers I like how the offers also come with not just the character shards, but a little bit extra that makes me feel like uh, I'm going to be rewarded more for spending money on the thing I wanted by having additional part uh, parts and items I can use in the game so the Lion King chest itself is great uh, these are the gem offers now this one is completely cosmetic, so I don't have to go into any detail about it. If you like cosmetic things, you feel free to buy it. Uh, if you don't, obviously. Um, as for the, the packs, this is again another little bit of a gambling in you. If you got it, you can feel free to give it a shot and maybe immediately go crazy. Now these do cost quite a bit of gems in my mind. I think that you shouldn't be paying a tax for the highest number. You should be paying a standard based on what not only the lowest, but more of the average is going to be. And if you take a quick look, it's more likely than not you're going to get eight Rafiki shards. Uh, if you combine them two, you're averaging about ten. You know, this is what? Over 80% chance that you're going to get either eight or twelve total. So if you're telling me it's 800 gems for around an average of ten or an expected value of ten shards, I got to tell you... The gambling ain't worth it. The investment on the line. Maybe 400 gems. That sounds a little bit like, but either way. You also do get Lion King coins, so if you do buy one, you are progressing towards the Lion King chest, and if you buy four, you get a free chest. What that means to you, I don't know. That's up to you to decide. I wouldn't buy them necessarily, not at that cost, but who knows. Uh, then we have the actual spending purchases, which just buy you the coins. Uh, this is... $10 for about two with a little bit extra. I do like how whenever you spend money, you get a little bit extra uh, for what you're getting. I, I appreciate that. Uh, the next is more for $20, so it's four of these chests. All in all, meaningful amount of money spent, but also a decent amount of value out of the chest, as we've already seen. So again, if you're looking to spend and maybe push a little bit more because you think... Uh, Simba's adorable. By all means, these are the options. Now, you can buy them. I think there's a limited time number you can buy them. I don't think you can throw $10,000 at this, but if you can, power to you. Um, that's it as far as what you can spend. Now, taking a quick look at those characters, because I think the gameplay of the events uh, are a little bit more accurate to the recommendation. It's always roughly the same fight, uh, just how strong the enemies are. And honestly, a little bit of it is, is fun because there's no loss. If you go into an event and you fail, you don't lose your attempt. So I think a lot of it should be left to surprise, let you see it a little bit. And of course, if you need help, feel free to ask me or one of the other content creators. Uh, but overall, these are not big brain events. You should be able to beat them relatively easily. Now, taking a quick look at the characters we're talking about here. We'll start with Rafiki. So Rafiki is classified as a support character uh, decent stats for a support character overall basic is a pretty solid attack with a chance of hitting twice okay uh, and again just to note all abilities are brought to level two or they're not ready you're not going to see any return out of ability that's not brought to level two most of the reason why is level two is when they do another thing this just allows it to happen this is an extra feature and three is usually just damage so we'll call his special uh, or heal is cleanse all harmful effects from a target restore a decent chunk of health and then restore health for every harmful effect that you removed this seems great because sometimes you may end up in a fight where there are a lot of debuffs like downtown villains characters onward characters uh it can be a very big heal when it happened now if the target team is simba all cooldowns are reduced by one works great when we see simba we'll kind of think about that but ultimately it's just a single target heal it has the potential of being a great heal but it's not reliably a phenomenal heal so 
decent heal. Surprise. There's a whole bunch of decent heals in the game. Special is very similar to Buzz Lightyear special. Uh, attacks a target, stuns them, and of course, 10% chance to gain an additional attack. Uh, extra attack is functionally a basic in this game. So an extra attack would do roughly similar damage to one of these right here. But that's just outside of the conversation. And his passive is wise moves. 15% chance at the start of turn to reduce the cooldowns of a random teammate by one. That's cool. If affected teammate is a Lion King character, also increase their speed meter by 30%. That's cool too. These are really cool. This is a really cool ability. When you start looking at them as a team together, and when you start figuring out where they're useful, this becomes an amazing ability and they all start working together like pieces of a puzzle. Overall, he's probably like, if I had to give it a score out of 100, he's probably like a, a 70 to 75 level character. He has great utility, he has a decent heal, but he's not gonna carry your team to victory. He's not the most important part of any team he's on. Moving into Simba, the next character you'd unlock, and let me just bring up regular Simba for you guys right here. Simba has quite a bit going on. The first he has is Royal Roughhousing. Basic attack, deals damage, chance to turn rewind. Now, you're going to hear me use that phrase. Reduce target opponent's speed meter is called a turn rewind. They lose their uh, ability to take a turn. So the fact that any character can do this, usually in my mind, gives a character a huge boost. You can choose it and you can get lucky and choose the right target and make sure that they can't take their turn. Sometimes that can throw an entire uh, fight off and is very meaningful. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the fact that there's always percentage chance to fail. I like reliability. I like when I push a button, I know what happens. Unless it's crazy RNG, then I'll take a little bit of RNG on it, but I do like it when an attack does what it's supposed to do. The percentage chance to reduce target opponent's speed meter is a great ability. I kind of just wish it was reliable because the basic is not an attack you should be using all the time. It's an attack you should be using when you don't have anything else to do. Uh, his special is quite simple. Uh, he restores health to a teammate and all flanking, so an entire row of characters equal to 100% of this character's current defense. That sounds weird. We'll get into why in a second. Extend the duration of helpful effects by plus one. Gain one taunt for one turn. This is a, a paladin move. He heals and protects in one turn. Now, it says he heals based on his current defense. We'll talk about why that's important, but just a little spoiler. Simba is a very high defense character. There's also a 30% chance for this character and all teammates to gain defense up. All teammates, not just uh, teammates that are affected by this. Cool feature. His ultimate is another flanking attack. It deals damage to target opponent and all flanking, and it inflicts offense down for one turn, making sure that when they attack, they do not hit nearly as hard. It also reduces each affected opponent's speed meter by 30%. We already talked about how the basic having turn rewind was good. This is truly awesome. Early game, I used Simba with Aladdin and Sean Yu and had this amazing combo where the front row just took three AoEs in a row. They were all dead. That was for PvE and a little bit of PvP stuff, and I don't recommend doing that, but it's really fun to see what happens when you use a whole bunch of AoE or flanking attacks. Moving to his passive. His passive is... Just a casual 2% bonus defense for every 1% missing health. Now, I don't want to go into the numbers here, so we're going to stick to a very simple math. If he is, if he loses 10% of his health, he gains 20% defense. That's it. And if I upgrade this, it becomes, I want to do this anyway, 40% defense, which means the more health he loses. The, le the more damage he takes, the less damage he will take. The lower his health is, the harder it becomes to damage him, which makes Simba crazy because if he's at full health, he is a way more vulnerable a character than if he is almost dead. If he's almost dead, it's way harder to kill him. Trust me, if you haven't seen it yet, you will. He becomes a very good tank in certain situations. He also has a leadership ability, Kind of. Teammates receive, any teammate, anyone who's on his team, receive 20% bonus to maximum health while defending in Club Wars. 
This tells you everything you need to know. Simba and the Lion King team, or whatever team you put them on, are designed to be characters on defense in a club war. You can obviously still use them on offense in a club war, but that's what their kits are supposed to do. Now, when you think about what Rafiki does by cleansing debuffs and you know reducing cooldowns, what Simba does, and when we get into Scar, you'll start seeing that the point of this team is to require a very specific response from an opponent and not just allow you know their strongest team if they're using downtown villains they're gonna have a very hard time beating this team at parity and but whenever you hear me say at parity it means when they're about the same power if they're stronger they're probably gonna beat down on you because this game is about stars gear building your characters up and not so much about uh, independent but once everyone is at around the same power, that's when the strategy will kick in. So Simba becomes a very good character in the Lion King team overall when you're looking at a club war defense. You can also add two extra characters to that team of your choice. Maybe you're gonna go with Wild since they're Wild's character, perhaps a Mordu and a Merida, and you end up with a little bit more value because they all get at maximum health. Now, the last character we're gonna take a quick look at is Scar. green smoke always gets me so scar is the chase right he's the hard character to get because it's going to take a couple passes or a little bit of money or time but usually that means that they have something going on for them a little bit stronger than what the average character does if you look at his basic he deals pretty decent damage to an opponent it inflicts continuous damage poison bleed whatever you want to call it imagine if he's swiping at you, you're bleeding, uh, which deals this much damage over one turn when attacking with stealth. Uh, so if he's in stealth, he can make sure they have a stack of continuous damage that will affect them on their next turn. Cool. Why is that relevant? I'm skipping all the other abilities, because whenever a teammate performs a basic attack, he has a 20% chance to also attack with the, his basic. So he has a chance to also put a bleed stack on, especially if he's in stealth, whenever anyone does a basic, specifically a basic attack, and either way, he will hit. And a check deals up to 147 damage four times, 20% bonus, critical strike chance if target is affected by blind. That's just a cute little thing they added to it. Chance to activate is increased by 50% if teammate is Lion King. So if Simba or Rafiki happen to use a basic, there is a coin flip chance that he's also going to come in and hit them for this amount of damage four times. Now, the reason this is relevant and it doesn't just say hit you for, what is that, 600 damage is because when you have an attack, that's when defense happens. So if I hit you for 100 and your defense would reduce that 100, I, you would only take 80 damage. Uh, if I hit you for 104 times, that reduction adds up. Whereas if I hit you for 60 damage, it comes out to the same number, except each independent attack gets to crit. So because I can attack four times and there's a chance some of them crit, there's a chance I will end up doing more damage or I might uh, affect something a little bit better. I might trigger something along those lines, but basically Scar shows up on a team and every time someone attacks, there's a chance he'll just show up and also hit that character, meaning your team becomes a little bit more aggressive. Now we'll just take a quick look at his other two abilities. His special is cinder swipe he hits someone for a pretty decent chunk of damage compared to the rest of his abilities he blinds them for two turns in this game blind is a roughly 30 percent chance that the next attack they're going to take is going to miss so useful and 50 percent chance to inflict defense now for one turn cool just decent attack with uh, added bonuses his special is unique in that there aren't many people who do this in the game he summons two hyenas into the battle to my knowledge the hyenas count as lion king because every time they attack he has a really high chance of attacking with them as well at least i've known uh the hyenas deal a decent amount of damage per their attack have a small but meaningful amount of health and assist allies attacking opponents affected by continuous damage hyenas have 50 percent chance to gain life drain for one turn when spawned he then gains stealth now you start seeing how his kit works. He shows up, he makes 
two other hyenas, goes into stealth to protect himself, and then as he's assisting other people in stealth, he attacks, does damage, puts continuous damage, gets extra damage in. That's kind of his role in the game. Now, there's not a lot of summoners in this game. I believe there's only about two or three. Uh, Jasmine included, if you count the summon that she makes, which is just Raja, who tanks for a turn and then dies. So the fact that he has a chance of making additional characters to attack can help, uh, especially if you build a team where characters dying matters with Dr. Facilier or something like that. Uh, overall, I enjoy him as a character. He's very fun. I enjoy using him on both sides in a club war. I've used him in the wilds, uh, specific events where uh, like tower i like to use him there because he pushes a little bit extra damage and can protect himself and that's really important but i don't think there's a, a version of the game where specifically scar is going to help you more than any character that's readily available or farmable so if i had to give him a rating I'd give him like an 80 for fun factor and then probably a 50 or 60 for usability right now and i hope that changes in the future as more pve content becomes available so now that we've looked at the characters and kind of discussed where they matter i just a couple of ideas for teams and i'll just go into a pvp arena to build them out for you Boop. and maybe a little bit of spell conversation so keeping in mind a couple of things the first of all is positioning matters right so i always want to heal characters that will most likely take the most damage so we're gonna put simba in the center for right now we're gonna put rafiki behind him i'm not particularly worried about rafiki taking some extra damage it's not a panic mode uh, and this isn't by any means perfect this is just for what i'm thinking about in the team i'm building so let's get rafiki in here And we're going to leave this slot open. We're going to put Scar a little bit further away. So these are the three Lion King characters. The reason I'm putting Lion, uh, Scar and Simba on the same line right now is when Simba has a target to heal, it heals everyone in the row. He can't heal himself when he uses his taunt. It's a feature. So if he's going low, you can't heal himself and get a taunt on. His heal is pretty good. However, if he's on the same row as someone you do want to keep alive, like, say, Scar or whoever I end up putting here, then his taunt not only helps him, but everyone else. Uh, in the exact same conversation, because Scar is important and I want to keep him alive, uh, I'd probably place any other tank or character that's capable of taunting right here to make sure the front row represents not only a decent damage but protection uh, i'd also consider putting a tank here depending on what i knew was going up but we're talking about just generic defenses right so let's go forward we know we have these characters what would we add to this well these characters are wilds lion king characters if we want to see any kind of value we can put together from wilds characters we can look at right now characters like hopper Hopper, uh, as a leadership ability, Wild's teammates gain tenacity. Not that important. Um, decent passive. There's no real debuffs going on in your team, so you're not getting a lot out of Hopper. Uh, and you're not getting a lot of super value, so he's questionable. Uh, other Wild's characters, Mordu. Where'd he go? Decent tank. Best tank in the game. Uh, would definitely help protect and turn Simba from a tank to an off tank, allowing him to do a decent amount of damage with his attacks and, and only have to taunt and be a tank when things are getting a little dicey. Mordu also becomes a damage dealer entering the late game and will help keep Scar alive, who is the biggest damage dealer in this game. Again, Rafiki is relatively safe in between at least a tank, uh, you can feel free to say, change them up. It's not going to matter. And now we have a pretty solid wild setup. Then the last character I mentioned earlier, you could use a character like Marita. You could use a character like Baloo if you happen to have them. Uh, or if you want to go a little bit silly, you can start adding like a single damage dealer or someone who takes advantage of multiple attacks. 
there's not too many characters that fit that description right now. So for me, I would use Merida or probably if you do have access to her, which I don't right now, Pocahontas. Pocahontas does help everyone on the team be better at what they are. And I believe she is a Wilds character in addition to a princess. So even if she wasn't, phenomenal addition to this team. Um, but the fifth slot is very open. I do like this comp in general. Now, spells. Goes without saying that on this team, uh, Spirit Mufasa would be a great spell. It gives every character offense up, defense up, or guaranteed crit based on how they need. Support characters getting guaranteed crit means their heals are going to hit a lot. Uh, offense characters getting offense up means their damage is going to hit a lot. And, of course, Simba gets all of them. So, overall... The spell sounds great. It's a little slow to charge, but especially on club war defense, you should be okay. It's very unlikely that uh, if they're if they're going to win the fight, it wouldn't matter how long, slow the spell goes to charge because they're hitting you with a character or team that's so much stronger than yours you've already lost. But at parity, like we talked about, or if you're a little bit stronger than them, this spell will definitely you'll like last. And you, once it goes off, you will have a good time. They will have to prepare for this spell specifically. Uh, the other spell off the top of my head that's probably going to help, obviously, if you look at the top spells in the game, some of them do work well everywhere. For example, Golden Hammer. Yes, I would very much like to resurrect a character if they die. This spell is great. Bucket of Soldiers, another example of a phenomenal spell, because this also will assist whenever someone basics. So now, because someone basics, you have a chance for Scar to assist, you have a chance for the Hyenas to assist, you have the chance for this, well, this is 100% assist, you can end up having one basic attack do more damage than any of your other attacks combined. So that's a cute little feature. I like this a little bit more on offense than on defense, because you get to control when this happens, and you're a smarter player than the computer usually. But that's not a bad option, I don't think. I, I don't like characters like Trigger uh, for this comp. I'm not a huge fan of of summons when you're already summoning on the board. You know, the slots matter. I don't like Shadow. There's no characters that matter too much. But if you have to, Pan Shadow will be great because all they do is basic. So there's a chance that you will trigger Scar's basic, etc., etc., uh, and then generic damage dealing spells, Iago, Duke Kaboom, you know, explosives, if you believe this, the fight's going to go on for a long time, and as it should, because you do have a healer, you have a tank healer in Simba, and theoretically a tank in Mordu, so you should be okay. Uh, other than that, play around and see what you like, especially when you use this team as an attack team. I've mentioned before, I don't think this is a PvP team, mostly because... What they accomplish doesn't benefit you as a PvP player, but I do think this is a phenomenal club war defense team, and the characters independently are good enough wilds characters that anytime something says require wilds, you'll have a pretty decent chunk. I do like Simba, so. <laughs> that said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop them below. Um, overall, I do enjoy these kind of events, and I hope... We see this style of event going forward. I like the events that allow you to progress at a pace. And, and as they continuously come back, you feel growth and progress, whether you've spent any money or whether you've just decided, hey, I really want Simba. It's also really important to know that, you know, if you can't do it on the first time, you get to choose. Well, it's coming back eventually, right? And eventually is sooner than later. So you should be OK. That said, if you miss out on Scar on this pass, I don't think you're hurting yourself at all, and I don't necessarily think that stopping what you're doing and focusing on Scar is the most important thing you have to do. Maybe if you just unlock Simba, that'll be good enough for now. That's pretty much all for this video. I tried to be as quick as possible. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scongeli, and I'll catch you later.